Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are taking our first look at the patch notes for the very next update. Server maintenance is scheduled to take place on February 1st, after which the update will be pushed to the consoles. It's February and we, while we should probably be done with all of the celebrations by now, we aren't. Aircraft carriers are coming to Legends as a part of a special test event. A branch of British heavy cruisers is arriving in early access. A new game mode, Arena, is shaking up the battlefield. And our, la our latest campaign features the fabled Dragon Slayer realized in steel. Tier 7 German battlecruiser Siegfried. At, and, or add to that the Lunar New Year content and some balanced tweaks. And this update is bound to make for an exciting start to 2021. Please note, while this update runs for five weeks, the next one will be released on Tuesday, March 9th, instead of the usual Monday. Alright, so let's get into the aircraft carriers, folks. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me about them. I can't say anything. I'm under NDA until they give us the okay to release information. So that's one thing you guys got to be aware of. I've seen a lot of people put out videos based on the screenshot or based on the 20 second clip that they posted a while back. And I just don't like to do that because it's all speculation. You have no idea what's going on. All you can do is take wild guesses and, and you're, you could end up giving a lot of misinformation. And I try to avoid giving a lot of misinformation, though some people might argue that I do anyway, um, because I'm a potato. Anyway, airstrike event. At long last, aircraft carriers are storming into Legends, albeit in form of a test event. Remember that. This is a test event. Okay? We're starting with Tier 3 and Tier 5 ships separated into their own mode for the first two weeks of the update. In other words, these ships will not break regular matchmaking. Okay? So that's good. I don't want them to come in and just destroy matchmaking again. We, we want to be able to enjoy our game or go in and play the event and have some fun there as well. Okay? But I do encourage everybody, if you do get accepted uh, into the uh, First to Fly event that I posted a link to yesterday or two days ago. I think it was yesterday. Um, I put it in the discussion tab, so if you haven't seen that, go to the discussion tab on my YouTube channel, and it should be there as one of the latest posts. Click on the link, sign up, and maybe you'll get chosen for that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they're doing it, but they want as much data as possible, so they're going to get a good number of people into it, all right? So the way these test events are, are going to work out, to get yourself behind, uh, wait, did we, did we skip it? Uh, separated in their own mode for the first two weeks of the update. Okay, keep that in mind. You'll be able to try out Japanese carriers Tier 3 Hosho and Tier 5 Ryujo. Ryujo? Ryujo? I apologize. <laughs> uh, anyway, as well as their American counterparts, the Tier 3 Langley and the Tier 5 Ranger. I can... I can pronounce those ones. To command the new ships, you'll get the help of Ernest King for the U.S. flat tops and Taman Yamaguchi for the Japanese machines. And I think I actually pronounced his name right. Woohoo! Uh, to get yourself behind the helm of one of the carriers, you'll first have to win a couple battles in this mode playing a non-carrier. In other words, you guys will have to start out by playing against carriers so that you can get a feel for just how nasty they are. Okay? How how mean it can be to be on the receiving end of something that can sit at the back of the map and do nothing. And still be top of the leaderboard at the end of the game because they just go out and they wreck everything that they see. But, let's hope that that ain't the way it's going to be on console. I have faith in our development team that they, are, they, they said when they first came out with the game that the only time that they would bring carriers to Legends is if they have found a way to balance them. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm holding fast. I'm, I'm praying that they have found a way to not just utterly break the game 
but still had the carriers that everybody seems to want. So, uh, fingers crossed. All right. Uh, we understand that most of you will be interested in playing carriers rather than against them. <laughs> you think? Uh, I don't even, I'm not, I, I, I enjoy learning new things, so I'm definitely going to be playing carriers to learn them. Uh, mainly because I need to know what I'm going against. So I need to know what I got to do and whatnot. Therefore, the airstrike mode has bots added to fill the battles. Considering that only one carrier per side is allowed, another important point is that we'll allow our volunteers and a few randomly selected players to get carriers right away. Ostensibly, just two battles before anyone else. In other words, uh, I know that the uh, community contributors are all going to be able to use carriers right away. Uh, so, but again, it sounds like you only need to play two battles to get to the carriers, so it's really not that big a deal uh, for everybody else. But they have to have somebody in carriers because there has to be two carriers uh, per game, one on each team in this mode. Uh, so keep that in mind. That's why they had to do that. Uh, we understand that they will have a bit more experience with the ship type at the moment of release. Uh, but the really, I mean, two games, that's not a whole lot of a, a big difference. You know what I'm saying? Uh, though, I will say this. Maybe they're talking about people who have done, like, super testing and stuff. That could be, too. Uh, so, super testers probably already played the uh, carriers, and they would have more experience, obviously, for obvious reasons. Some important info about carriers in their current form. You can only control one entity on the screen at a time. So once your squadron is in the air, you lose control of your carrier. Keep that in mind. You have access to two types of squadrons. Now, I wonder if there's a way to just drop control of your, your uh, squadron. So, say, you launch your squadron, you're halfway to your target, and you realize somebody's coming after your ship. Uh, can you just cancel the attack or whatever and then go back to controlling your carrier so that you can try to do other things? That is something I'm interested in. Uh, but anyway, you have two you have access to two types of squadrons, torpedo and dive bombers. This is original a or this is original aircraft carrier from World of Warships way back in the day. None of the armor piercing bombs, none of the none of the rocket planes, none of the crazy stuff that comes later in the thing. Um, just torpedo and dive bombers. That I can deal with. That is familiar to me. So hopefully that is a thing. Okay. Uh, anyway, the first type launches torpedoes that deal damage and may cause flooding. Okay, the torpedoes dropped from the uh, planes don't do near as much damage as anything that's launched from a ship. They're much smaller because they're being carried by planes, so they carry a, a much lower warhead, uh, or mu much lower yield warhead on them. So they just don't do as much damage, and they're less likely to cause flooding. So don't think that you're just going to be obliterated every time that you get torped by these things, hopefully. Now, and I know that's the way it was on PC the few times that I got to play on PC way back in the day. Um, the second type dives to drop HE bombs that can start fires or incapacitate modules as well as deal damage. Now the HE bombs are very nasty against destroyers and uh, can help knock out AA on uh, battleships and, and cruisers and such like that uh, to try to make it easier to attack them with say torpedoes. Uh, the AA offer or the AA suites of other ships have received no changes and for the purpose of this test, we're not enabling the display of the AA stats either. Considering the limited power of carriers in their current form, as well as the limitation of one per team, we're expecting that the current AA will be sufficient, even without consumables and or rebalancing. Don't forget that it is indeed a test event. So we need to collect as much data as we can. So go into this knowing that your AA has not changed at all. So keep that in mind. The AA guns of the ship or of other ships 
begin to fire as soon as the enemy aircraft is, is within proximity, and they do not affect the firing ship's det detectability. That's actually huge. For you destroyer fans out there, uh, one of the nastiest problems with destroyers on PC is that you have to keep enabling and disabling AA to keep yourself hidden. Um, and if you forget, your AA starts firing its guns and everybody lights up like a Christmas tree. And uh, you don't have a good day. But with this, your AA going off doesn't actually increase your detectability, which is, I believe, probably for the better. However, the enemy will see where the AA is firing from. Okay, so just like your shells and stuff, uh, even if you're not detected, you, we can still see where the shots are originating from. And because AA fires much faster, you get a much quicker, like, uh, dial in. You can dial in on where they're at a lot easier uh, than you would, say, if you're waiting for them to fire their main guns again um, in a smoke screen, for instance. Uh, catapult fighters for all cruisers and battleships have changed to make them less of a passive spotting satellite and more of a countermeasure against aircraft carrier attacks. So uh, those of us who have changed over to spotter planes on our battleships may be switching back to fighter planes in order to help fend off some of those attacks from the uh, enemy carriers. For most cruisers, the cooldown of the catapult fighter has been reduced from 180 to 80 seconds, while the time the plane stays in the air has been reduced from 360 to 60 seconds. Okay. For battleships, the cooldown has been reduced from 180 to 80 seconds, while the plane now stays, in the, uh, stays airborne for 90 seconds instead of 360. Now, let me double check real quick. Uh, I'm fairly confident that that is a misprint. So I, I think I saw in the announcement for this in the CC chat, I was about to bring it up, then I remembered I'm capturing my screen and I could actually get in trouble for that. Uh, so I can't actually go back and look, but I'm pretty sure for the battleships, the cooldown uh, for the fighter plane has not changed at all. Um, so keep that in mind. And it probably has to do with the fact that there are a couple commanders that go off of the uh, the fighter planes. So that is that's a thing as well. There are no service costs for carriers in airstrike mode. Other ship types retain regular ship service cost. Okay, so carriers don't have to pay, but everybody else does. I guess. I don't know how I feel about that. If you're not going to have service costs for one type of ship, just take the service costs off completely. You know what I'm saying? Control-wise, hitting enemy ships with your torpedoes and bombs is going to be the most difficult aspect of the gameplay. Um, we'll see. <laughs> That's all I got to say. We'll see how difficult it is. And I just air quoted even though you guys can't see it. Um... If it's, if, if it's what I remember, it's not that bad. While the plane now... Uh, la, 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 where'd I go? So don't be hard on yourself if you miss the first few drops. Yeah, the first few drops, maybe. But uh, after you get the hang of it, you'll be freaking sniping with the bombs and uh, torpedoes, probably. Just as shells require a lead, planes require one too. And you need to get an understanding of your window of opportunity when launching attack. You'll be able to use ships of up to tier 6 when playing against the carriers, and you'll want to play the regular ships as there are several sets of available missions. So, there are actually incentives to play ships other than carriers in this event. The first batch will be available during week 1 of the update, encompassing getting your first carriers, new dimensions, carrier mastery, uh, and prowess in battling against them. Week 2 will offer similarly titled missions for Tier 4 through 6. The missions are chained, and Born to Fly can be quite specific with its requirements, so make sure you familiarize yourself with the challenges. British Heavy Cruisers are coming, 
an entirely new line of ships is entering our waters in early access. And if you guys don't remember what early access means, it means they will be available through crates uh, for the entirety of the update. And then once the update is finished and we go to the next update, those that were in the early access will be released fully. Now, just to clear this up as well, if you get an early access ship in a crate, it is yours. They will not take it away. So just keep that in mind. You do not have to usually buy crates, though that's the easiest way to get them. Usually there's a couple missions that will give you a couple crates. Now your, your likelihood of getting the ships uh, in those crates that you get for free, probably not great. But it is usually possible. So keep that in mind. Um, anyway, there are quite a few differences that these ships possess in comparison with their lighter counterparts. First, they have access to HE shells. And while the ballistic trajectories may be comparatively arced, the per salvo damage is quite significant, no matter what shell type you use. They are also relatively well armored and have an improved repair party consumable that restores significantly more citadel damage than it does for other nations. Additionally, these cruisers have access to sonar, plus their torpedoes can be launched individually further improving your tactical freedom. Something, of course, has to give, and that something is speed and maneuverability. You'll have to play chess a lot of the time and try to predict your opponent's movements. To gain early access to either of the ships, open British cruiser crates that are available in the campaign and in the store. So there you go. If you get into the campaign, Admiralty backing and stuff, you can get these crates for, uh, for you know, uh, missions that are at, at different tiers of the campaign, um, and you can buy them outright if you want to go that route. As usual, the higher the ship tier, the lower the chances of getting her, and big crates offer better chances. While there's no tier 7 uh, Albemarle? <laughs> what the heck is that? Seriously, British, what is that? Good lord. Albemarle. I can't even say that. Like, I get it that the British talk with, like, an underbite, and it drives me nuts, but I can't... Sp I, that is in English. Available through early access. The Tier 5 premium ship London is uh, among the ships that may drop as a reward. Oof. <laughs> I feel sorry. The London, I wasn't a fan of. It, it does hit well. I do like its AP, but, man, it doesn't take a hit. It gets deleted every time a battleship looks at it. It's like a Pensacola. Um, but I guess that's to be expected in those early tier uh, heavy cruisers. Play or please check out the drop chances at World of Warships Legends.com slash containers before making your purchasing decisions. So uh, yeah, make sure you guys check that out if you want to know what percentage chances to get certain ships. Among the goods that can drop from the containers is also the Union Jack expendable camo which is the British flag. If you're not from Great Britain, you probably didn't, don't know what the Union Jack is, but it is their flag, uh, which you can convert into the permanent version for any of your ships, including non-British ships. The available ships are Tier 4 Hawkins, Tier 5 Devonshire, Tier 6 Surrey, Tier 7 Ab... God bless... Is it Abermoral or is it Albermoral? Like, I cannot say Albermarle. That is so weird. Albermarle? I'll go with Albermarle. That's closer. I don't know. That's weird. We'll become... I've not run into a word. That's like some people can't say wheelbarrow. Or wheelbarrow. Okay? I can say that. I can say submarine. I can't say Albermarle. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop it will become available in the next update once the ships become researchable. That's normal for these uh, early access ships. They never bring in the Tier 7 until it actually releases. So you can get up to Tier 6, and you can get all the XP you need to get to Tier 7. But Tier 7 will not become available until the March update. So keep that in mind. The Dragon Slayer campaign, German battlecruiser Siegfried is the centerpiece of our new campaign. She's capable in a multitude of situations thanks to her powerful guns and strong armor-piercing rounds, as well as her torpedoes and sonar. 
This ship has found her home at Tier 7, among the top competition, and she's ready to take on all comers. Much like the previous campaign, we're introducing a currency that you'll be able to earn once you're done with the main com er, campaign. The main campaign. From this update onwards, it's steel. You'll be able to earn it after reaching the final milestone of the campaign, no matter wh uh, whether you have the Admiralty backing or not. However, if you purchased the campaign prior to the last week, you'll be able to get more steel from the daily and weekly missions. Steel will become an increasingly useful resource as we add ships and other rewards available in exchange for it. Uh, this is something that they did on on uh, World of Warships PC as well. There are several different, I think there's like coal, there's steel, there's like several different resources that you can earn in various ways and you can buy certain ships that are only available for those resources. So that may be a new way that they're bringing in some ships that say, um, I don't know, maybe Jean Bart or something like that, that was available through a campaign that is very rare and they don't want everybody to just be able to buy up. You know what I mean? They want people to have earned it. Uh, so that the people that, that earned it through the campaign or bought the campaign the first time through don't feel like they've been robbed, you know what I'm saying? So that's my guess as to what they're going to use steel for is probably something similar. Uh, the most exciting offer right away is probably going to be USS Missouri. Oh my God. If you guys don't know what USS Missouri is, you guys need to look it up. Uh, maybe... I could be wrong here, but I'm fairly confident USS Missouri was the ship. It's an Iowa-class battleship, first of all, in case you were wondering what it is. It's an Iowa-class battleship. It's one of the four battleships of the Iowa class. Uh, Missouri was the one that I believe uh, freaking... Uh, they signed the the treaty at the end of the, the World War II on, in Japan. So I believe, I believe the, the USS Missouri is where they did all the, all of the like signing of the treaties and all of that, uh, or the surrender and whatnot. So uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly confident in that this is just coming from my head. I'm not looking it up. You guys see my screen. It was just me bringing this out of my head, but I'm fairly confident USS Missouri was the ship that everybody did all the, uh, the end of world war two after, uh, we beat, uh, Japan to close out the war. Um, but it will take seasoned captains several updates to gather enough steel to obtain her. This campaign in particular will allow you to amass as much as 1,250 units of steel, provided that you buy it outright on day one. Okay, so that's the other thing about steel. Because you only earn steel after you've finished the campaign, the people that buy the campaign on day one will be able to get the maximum number of steel. And those of us who like to finish the campaign uh, and get the ships for as cheap as possible won't earn as much steel. So keep that in mind. And I don't know how much steel is going to cost for each ship, but uh, just keep that in mind. If they're saying several updates and they're saying that you can get a maximum of 1250 per per update, basically, because we get a new campaign every update. So... Uh, if they're saying you only get a maximum of 1250 per update, we're talking a lot of steel potentially. So uh, otherwise, if you finish it on the first day of week five, you'll be able to up your steel count by 250. Okay, so you basically get a thousand units of steel head start on everybody else by buying the, the um, campaign on day one. Okay, that's a significant change. It's a, that's a lot of extra steel. But you're spending a lot of money, too, because usually these ships are, what, uh, 50, 50 to to $100 to buy out a campaign? So keep that in mind. They're, they're not cheap. Other than Missouri, you'll, have to, you'll be able to obtain various goods in exchange for steel, starting with commander items. More steel is always going to be available from either arena or ranked modes, than from campaigns that I do like make I don't know about arena yet we'll have to see what the arena entails but but ranked modes need something to to incentivize people to go to it and this could be a good way adding steel in and doing ranked battles you get more steel for the uh 
the ranked battles and stuff. I like that. Because, honestly, in its current form, ranked battles is an absolute drag and nobody wants to play it. Which is why everything is taking freaking forever to get into matches and you're still getting a bunch of potatoes. No matter what tier you get to. The campaign rewards include the usual array of goods, currencies, XP, commander items, and so forth. But importantly, there are also several Royal Navy cruisers crates that might just contain one of the newcomers. So you can use your steel to buy some of the cruiser crates and potentially get some of the new ships. Uh, rewards that you can get without Admiralty backing is as follows. Okay. The value of the rewards without Admiralty backing, 16,190 doubloons. The additional rewards that you get, so you get all of this with Admiralty backing, and this with Admiralty backing. You spend the 2,500 de uh, doubloons or gold, you get this extra, including the Tier 7 Cruiser Siegfried. Assuming that you finish the campaign. Total value of the rewards with Admiralty backing is 69,355. Now, I believe that's a little bit lower than they have been in recently, but that's still a huge difference between 16,000 doubloons uh, worth of stuff for without, 69,000 with. So Admiralty backing, I've said it before, I'll say it again, is almost always going to be the best way to spend gold in World of Warships Legends. Because you just get so much for it. You get a lot of things. You get all all kinds of camos and, and uh, boosters and promotion orders, insignias, commendations, you name it. Everything. Uh, it just makes it a lot more worth it. Now, let's get into arena mode. And now for something mostly different. We're introducing a new game mode. Arena is a seasonal team deathmatch event that features four teams of three ships. Okay. So right off the bat, it, it kind of reminds me of the Rust and Rumble event. Um, so keep that in mind. It, it is basically Rust and Rumble. You'll get the chance to show off your skills playing Tier 5 ships and make a name for yourself across the entire Legends community by climbing the ladder. The first iteration of ladder is going to count all of your ship's XP with all possible boosters applied. So those who play the most and use boosters will come out on top. However, we will try different methods, including those unaffected by boosters or premium, later on. Please consider this a test event or test season in this regards. As we plan to use other metrics in the future, not necessarily boostable by anything other than the number of games played. Importantly, the biggest reward of this season for the top 1% of the leaderboard is 2,500 units of steel. Good lord. So that's actually more. That's what? Double. That's literally double the amount of steel that you can get from a campaign by buying it out. And that is for the top 1% of the leaderboard in this mode. But that being said, I don't like the way that they're doing these. Because basically, it requires you to only play that game mode. If you want to be in the top 1%, you're going to only need to play that game mode because you need to put in the most games. Because the current way that they're they're tallying uh, the leaderboard is by total XP. So the more you play, the more XP you earn. So this is going to tr probably cause people to uh, run into the battle, die right away, and jump out, grab another ship, and go. Depending on how many Tier 5 ships you got, you can literally... Sail into battle, die, get back out of battle, grab your next ship, because you're still going to be getting XP. You just can't log in and go AFK. So we'll see how people treat this, but I don't like that total XP earned as the uh, the starting way to measure the, the leaderboard on this. Uh, I think it should have something to do with skill rather than amount of time that you have to play the game. Like That's not fair to any of us that don't have that much time. Though, to be fair, I have more time than others, I just don't do it as much. <laughs> I guess, but I'm just saying in general, there's a lot of people that don't have 10 hours a day to sit in front of a computer and, or sit in front of a console and, and play arena mode. But there are people that do. There are people that are going to play this thing probably 12 to 14 or more hours a day and try to be tops of the leaderboard just based off of XP earned alone. Um, so keep that in mind. Anyway, 
which you can you you can either stockpile over several updates, which is probably the best way to do it instead of just spending it. But uh, yeah, thirty thousand steel is what the price of the USS Missouri is going to be. I wonder what the difference between the Missouri and the Iowa and the uh, yeah Missouri and the Iowa is going to be. Uh, that'll be interesting. I know with uh, Alabama and Massachusetts, Massachusetts got the reload or the uh, secondary buff and stuff. So it'll be interesting to see the difference between Missouri and Iowa. So there will be differences. It'll just be interesting to see what they are. Um, the basic rules are. Arena battles are going to be available from February 15th to March 9th. There are four teams on the map, which with each comprising of three Tier 5 ships. If a team ship or ships are the last to stay afloat, then that team wins and each of the players on the team gets 30% XP for the match. The matchmaker will try to mirror the ship types of all four teams but will allow for non-mirrored compositions after particular thresholds. In other words, if Matchmaker was taking too long to get you into a match, it will start to change uh, its, what it's looking for for a match for you. So if you're running three battleships or three cruisers or three destroyers instead of mixing them up you know, one way or the other, then you're less likely to get into a match early anyway. There are no ship type limitations per team per division. However, the less diverse your team is, the longer it will take to find a match. For example, three destroyer, three battleship, three cruisers, so on and so forth. There's only one key area on each map in the very center. So it's kind of like Epicenter in that, except Epicenter has multiple rings that you capture on your way in. Okay. This mode features friendly fire. Oh, God. All right, so... This is the first time that we've had friendly fire on console, and you know how the potatoes like to shoot you, so this will be interesting. Hopefully, if you're going into this game mode, you're bringing teammates with you. That's all I'm saying. If you hit an ally, 33% of the damage will be applied to their ships, so it's not going to be full damage, so that's good. But still, ramming is not, however, affected by friendly fire. That's also good. Players who fire at their allies will not receive any XP for the battle, so there is a huge huge incentive to not shoot your teammates so keep that in mind um yeah if you lose all of your xp for the battle you've just wasted your time that's that's rough so don't be shooting your teammates so we ask you to be extra careful especially with torpedoes yes definitely with torpedoes we understand that players might not da or might damage their allies by mistake but serial griefers will be dealt with accordingly. So in other words, if you have been seen griefing your teammates multiple times throughout this event, you will likely receive a ban of some sort. If there are ships from more than one team still afloat at the end of the match, said match is considered a draw and no team receives the 30% bonus. Okay, so... That that's interesting. So in a draw, nobody wins the the winner's bonus. Interesting. I guess it makes sense. Rewards are credited once the season is over. That'll keep people trying to engage one another too, because if the only one that wins is the one that stays afloat, and the only way to get the thirty percent bonus is to finish everybody, that's going to make people a lot more likely to run into one another. Uh, rewards are credited once the season is over. The exact reward you will receive depends on your standing on the ladder at the moment the season ends. There are six tiers of rewards, depending on which percentile of the ladder you end up occupying. Okay, so that's a big deal. For those of us who play the, the thing early and play it hard, uh, we can reach a certain tier on the leaderboard, right? And you think, oh, I'm in the top 1%, I can quit playing. Not really, because if you quit playing it in the top 1%, there's a good chance by the end of the event that you'll be out of the top 1%. And so uh, keep that in mind if that, if that was your goal. So it is not given to you right away once you reach the top 1%. You have to be in the top 1% at the end of the season, which makes sense. Participation trophies. This, I'm assuming, is the lowest percentile, is... 10 promotion orders, 3 basic crates, and 500,000 credits. 
top 90% gets 20 promotion orders, 2 Royal Navy cruiser crates, and 30 Commander XP. Or 30,000 Commander XP. The top 50% receive 25 promotion orders, 2 Winter Big Crates, 20,000 Global XP. Top 25% gets an Insignia, 2 Big Royal Navy Cruiser Crates, and 500 Paint. Top 10% gets 2 Commendations, 2 Commander Crates, and 1,000 Doubloons. Nice. And the top 1% get the Arena Season 1 Champion Flag, 2 Lunar New Year Crates, and 2,500 steel. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Lunar New Year. To commemorate the Lunar New Year celebrations, the home port will be set to a themed haven and special content will be offered in the store. You'll get to, or you'll get a choice of the two ships and a special container combined in different bundles. This content will become available in the premium store on February 12th, and we'll announce the end for sales separately, end date for the sales separately. You can expect the following content. Southern Dragon and Eastern Dragon, visually different variants of the Tier 6 Cruiser Miyoko, with premium bonuses applied. The stats are unchanged compared to Miyoko. So everything is the same with the regular Miyoko, except you get a special paint job, which will be a permanent camo, as well as you also get premium bonuses on credits and XP earned. So, uh, nice. Lunar New Year's crates, containing such goods as Air Dragon and Fire Dragon disposable camo camos. That's interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what those are. I'll be honest. They've got a cool name. I would love to see what they look like. The Ox Personal Patch and a similar flag is available in one of the bundles. All right, balance changes. Uh, there's quite a bit of balance changes. The Cheshire, rudder shift time decreased from 13.76 to 11.76. Main battery reload time reduced from 17 to 16 seconds. Repair party modified. It now restores the same amount of HP, but over 9.3 seconds instead of 27. So it's got a much faster repair so uh nice cossack the uh main battery reload time reduced from five to four and a half seconds torpedo reload time reduced from 96 to 72 seconds that's a huge buff for your torps charlemagne main battery reload decreased from 13 to 12 seconds extremity armor improved from 16 to 25 millimeters that's massive uh, I don't know exactly what that uh, equates to. I guess I could check real quick. That'd be 25 times 14.4. 360. So you can uh, handle up, or you cannot be overmatched by guns that are th less than 360 millimeters. Is it 14.4 or 14.3? Let's just go both of them. Just, oops. Clear. 25 times 14.3 It's 357.5. I think it's 14.3 is the overmatch number that I'm looking for. But uh, 357.5 sounds a lot more likely. So uh, keep that in mind. So basically, it's, it's not capable of being overmatched by uh, Leon. Um, King George, I believe, also has smaller caliber guns. Um that's about it. And then all of the cruisers, of course, and whatnot below them. So it is a huge buff, but it's not as big a deal as like most people shooting at it are going to not notice. Okay. Vanguard. <sighs> the Vanguard gets another buff. Really? Does it really need another? Bu they have been buffing the Vanguard since it, the game released. Well, not really because they weren't here yet, but since the Vanguard was released... <laughs> HP restored to the Citadel by Repair Party increased from 16 to 25%. Okay, so now if you get Citadel, it's like, man, we've tried everything we can to keep this thing from getting Citadel. We've moved it below waterline. We've made it smaller. We've done all the things trying to make it easier so that it's not getting obliterated. And yet, for some reason, they keep getting Citadel. Well, that's because everybody that uses them sails around broadside to everything and goes, Hey, Citadel me, please. 
Please, Citadel. That's like I was going, man, I wish I could heal all my freaking Citadel damage back. Then I could sit broadside to everything all the time. But okay, okay. Vanguard is a pretty crap ship, so I guess buffing it isn't a bad thing, right? Like, how many times you gotta polish a turd before you just call it a turd? Am I wrong? Shell grouping improved by about 2.6%, and in so many words, it's just a slight buff to the accuracy. 2.6% to your dispersion, eh, not that big a deal. We get better buffs than that from Commander Perks, so that's really not going to be too noticeable. Uh, repair Party Modified, it now restores the same amount of HP, but over 10 seconds instead of 28. So again, they're speeding up the, the heals, so you're able to get the same amount of HP back, but it doesn't take as long to get that HP back. So you're getting your heal much quicker, meaning it can get you out of trouble a lot, a lot easier. As well as, remember your cooldown for your repair parties doesn't start until the timer for the repair party is up. So now, instead of waiting 28 seconds after you hit the button for the cooldown to start, you're only going to be waiting 10 seconds. That's a big change. Okay. Duke of York. Based, uh, base number of charges of sonar has been increased from 1 to 2. That's probably a good thing. The Duke of York's a good ship. I like it, but it is nice to have that extra sonar. So, uh, I like that. There are also a couple changes to skills of consumables. Namely, the Fight Fire with Fire skill now works if damage control party is either on cooldown or depleted. Okay. So, this is actually now huge for you Russian battleship captains. Those of you who have really enjoyed your Russian battleships, probably ought to run this perk. Because once you use all of your damage controls, now this can actually save you. Before it wouldn't, but now it does. So uh, yeah, that actually could come in handy. But remember, it's still only when it only kicks in if you're on fire three times. So they can set you on fire twice and leave you burn. So keep that in mind too. The enhanced secondary targeting consumable available on battleships now has three charges instead of two. And its cooldown has been lowered by 20 seconds to 160 instead of 180. So that's a nice buff for those of us who run that on, uh, say, Bismarck and Massachusetts. Continuing our tradition of hiding bonus codes in the patch notes, here's another one for 12 Hunter camos. All right, so take this code right here and type it in on the World of Warships Legends site after you log in, and you, you can... Uh, get 12 hunter camos and everybody likes the hunter camos okay miscellaneous ch uh, changes and improvements are as follows voice chat now works again between all of the platforms before xbox series x and s could not communicate with any playstation players um rental ships have been removed from your accounts any xp earned has been moved to the tier one ship so that you still keep the xp for a uh, global conversion if you want Gunshots have received visu improved visual effects. That's nice. It says the barrel action, so I'm going to assume that the barrels actually move back like they're being recoiled. That'll be interesting. Or maybe they, after they fire, they drop down to go into reload. And you know what I'm saying? That'll be interesting. Um, the Azure Lane Fusu, Queen Elizabeth, and Azure Lane Charn Horse commanders have received the Fight Fire with Fire legendary skill. The following ships can now be outfitted with historical camouflages that can be created in the loadout menu for 75 paint. Uh, now, obviously, it's going to create the lowest form of the permanent camo, but just being able to create the permanent camos is pretty cool. But Fuso, Aoba, Fubuki, New York, New Mexico, Pensacola, Farragut, and Mayhan all will be able to have a permanent camo that you can create using paint. And then, of course, you use paint to upgrade it to the maximum tier. Bug fixes. Players could sometimes encounter HDR turning off and then back on when accepting division invitations. The battle mode is now correctly displayed on the battle results screen. Previously, it has always showed domination. I didn't realize that. Is that has that been a thing? I mean, I just thought that we were always in a domination. <laughs> I don't get a regular game mode very often. It's almost always domination. That's why it showed up. It ain't a bug. It's just that we're always in domination mode. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that's just me. 
the up command no longer sticks in the main menu after the battle is over. Okay, so I know this was a bit of a long video, but I wanted to get it out there for you guys. If you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.